This episode of Grilled is sponsored by Rationale, your leading provider in multifunctional hot food preparation equipment. Register now for a free Rationale Live demo at www.rationale-online.com. This is Grilled, a podcast by the Staff Canteen. Thanks for listening. I'm Cara, editor of the Staff Canteen. And before we meet my guests, uh, if you uh, enjoy this podcast, please do pass us on to your friends and colleagues. Uh, the more listeners, the better. Um, in this episode, I'm catching up with uh, two chefs we spoke to during the first lockdown as part of our Facebook Live discussion. Uh, we thought it would be a good opportunity in uh, lockdown two to see if they'd achieved what they set out to do uh, when we spoke to them in the summer, what the restaurant is like now, um, and whether those changes have been implemented, and what a second lockdown means for their plans. Um, I did have one of them on my lockdown lock in live, which I had to give an 18 rating to. So uh, if you're easily offended, uh, switch off now, although you will miss all the fun stuff. Um, so, right. Daniel Clifford, Mark Abbott, welcome to Grilled. And it's not live, so you can swear. Oh, lovely. I'm going to be good this time. Oh, people will be so disappointed. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they've seen the best of me, so they can have the worst of me. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you both? I think we're about a week in now, aren't we, to this second lockdown. I feel like it's been months, but actually it's only about a week, isn't it? So how are you uh, both? I, well, myself, uh, this is the first time I've seen Mark since last week. Uh, We've both taken a week off. Uh, we've had a few conversations, obviously, sorting out payroll and um, what, what our plans are for uh, December. But I've been painting my house, uh, doing my garden, uh, doing all the things that I didn't do during the first lockdown because uh, we were actually cracking on with midsummer. So it's been, it's been like a bit of a week's holiday, really. But now it's back to... Um, reality so we're now starting to think about menus and uh the changes we need to make for december if we open so a week away what from each other do? mark are you having withdrawal symptoms from daniel <laughs> um well you can't see me so i can sort of uh, i'll say yes um but no i think i think definitely having withdrawal symptoms from working 100 percent. i think it's uh you know it's Chef just says you have you sort of have a week away, um, sort of to see you know to catch up on a few bits and bobs outside of work, and now it's a case of right, you know we want to get cracking and uh, look at what we can change and uh, what we can make better, really. Yeah, I mean obviously we've got a, a few more weeks yet, but I'm sure they will go very quickly. Well, hopefully if it, they. Sh- let us come yeah, back on the strong. 2nd of December, yeah, so, okay, um, so before we talk about uh, Midsummer House and, and your team and the year 2020 in general, which none of us particularly like talking about, um, I have a few less serious questions which I want to ask you, because um, I feel like I, I know you both quite well now, but our audience, uh, they, uh, they might enjoy this insight, so, yeah. um, so to start with, Great Rich Menus Christmas special is starting soon. Um, yeah. So I want you to rate these uh, past Great British Menu winners in order of personality. So the funniest personality? chef, yeah, funniest chef to the most boring. Okay. <laughs> Although you might think they're all That's funny. A bit hard, isn't it? Go on. <laughs> this is might, a bit dodgy. Yeah. yeah, well, I like to put you on the spot. So your choices yeah, are <laughs> your choices are Marcus Waring, Ben Pennell, Jason Atherton, Penny Atkinson, and Phil Howard. What are we saying for uh, best personality? Is this uh, it? Uh, personality. I've I cooked with a few of those, so uh, uh, personality for me has got to be Glyn. Uh, Mark, are we agreeing on Glyn for top top dog? Uh, I I'm going to go Phil Hard. Okay. What for I'm personality? Yeah, it's Phil, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I cooked with Glyn, and I'll be honest with you. I was, that was the first year I ever did it. And um, I was so stressed out. I remember he went over to the sink. He said, Daniel, Daniel's a leak over here. So I ran over to see if I could do anything about it. And he had actually had an actual physical leak in the sink. And it was just like, you tosser. But yeah, they're all great chefs. Phil, I'll be honest with you, I was in the kitchen for a week with Phil. And um, Well, you did the final with Phil, didn't you? Yeah, I did the final with Phil. And I'll be totally honest with you, I think... Um, that was like cooking with my hero. That was like cooking with someone that I'd looked up all my life at. And it was Phil Howard. He was like the, you know, smoking a fag with Phil after service is like, I felt like I was one of his boys. It was brilliant. <laughs> uh, 
he's a man that I, I look up to. He's a man that I respect. And he's a man that um, we both have been to his restaurant recently, well, since it's opened, the new one. And yeah. I think it's the tastiest food in London. It does, it's not the prettiest, but it is the tastiest. Okay, okay. So Ben and Phil are up there. So you've got yeah. Jason, Kenny and Marcus left. Well, Kenny's a, Kenny's a legend, isn't he? He's an absolute legend. I, so if we're going to put it in my format, it would be uh, Mark can do his format afterwards, but mine would be Glyn, Glyn, Phil, Kenny. Who's next? You've got uh, Marcus and Jason left. Oh, it's got to be Jason. Jason's a right giggle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, mine is... No, actually, mine is, is Glyn... Jason, Kenny, Phil, Marcus. Okay. I mean, we're not saying that they're, none of them are funny. We're just saying... No, you're... they're all funny, but I think Marcus is a very serious individual. And I think, yeah, he's a very on-point chef. And uh, he, um, you know, I don't think he's the type of... He's not the type of guy you can have a laugh with, like, with the bike sheds, is he? He's like the type of guy... <laughs> he won't get me, that's for sure. He oh, actually... Yeah. Do you know what he really surprised me when I because he obviously did one of the the lock in lives as well and he actually really surprised me he was uh, he wasn't as serious as I was expecting so, yeah, uh, yeah no, I, no, I like I, to please you you know this industry is such a beautiful place now that there's so much respect between everybody that it's difficult you know personalities is down to friendship as well and um, like I know Mark. I know Mark inside of work and outside of work and people would look at Mark and say that he's a very serious person and anyone that works with him would say he's very serious. But there is a real fun side to him as well, but not many people see that because you're at work. So it's, um, you know, I would say in the kitchen now, I'm more fun than Mark is. But the other day, that's because... That's because <laughs> I agree, uh, it's, it's, it's good cop, bad cop to reverse. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> and uh, I, I get I get to be the joker now, so it's it's it makes my life a bit easier, and he's probably harder. But you know, <laughs> the, the be the day that I retire, and he can take my shoes, so it'd be good. So Daniel is putting himself above you, Mark, in terms of personality. There, I think. Oh, that's a bit rude, isn't it? That's I think that's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think different diff different personalities, different personalities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Staff go to different people for different reasons. That's the truth. They come. Okay. That's, that's the funny bit, actually. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. They talk to me about their girlfriends and their problems at home. They talk to him about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> God knows why. Love it. Okay. <laughs> um, are you? So before we move on to the next question, are you agree with that, Mark, or are you slightly different with your uh, with your top? Uh... Well, to be honest, I haven't met them all. Oh, okay. It's a very different generation. Okay. Like, you no, know, I've met, I've met, I've met Glenn as in on a bit of you know like at a different events and things. Actually, to be fair, I've actually met Kenny. I had uh, lunch with Kenny before the Michelin Awards last year. Okay. Um, and yeah, he's he's top. He is top. Um, um, Phil, you know, I've had a bit of a conversation, but I don't know them as in depth as what obviously Chef does because. They like a great British menu. He's cooked with the majority of them and things like that. So it's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you have to trust him in his order then. <laughs> yeah, I will do. <laughs> right, next question. As most of the awards have been cancelled this year, I want you to tell me an award that doesn't exist, but you would like to see and you would definitely win it if it did exist. It doesn't have to be cooking related. It's an award that you would like. I would definitely win that. I'd definitely win the most... Uh... OCD award, that's for sure. Would you? Yeah, I'll, I'll second yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I think uh, it's starting to drive me mental, if you want the truth. Really? Yeah, yeah. Especially Give me an example if, of how OCD you are. Uh, quarter to 12 last night, I was out picking leaves off my garden. Oh, my God. <laughs> Head torch. That's how bad I am. And uh, you got, Your garden is picture perfect, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, it is now, because yeah. I've had a week to sort it out. But... Um, Apart from pesky nature dropping leaves. On yeah, the yeah. But yeah, yeah. But no, I think that that's definitely uh, an award that I would win. Um, okay, I like that. Uh, I think Mark. Mark, what award would you like to win that doesn't exist? I got really good at walking my dog recently. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a puppy last uh, December. Um, 
and it was a working cocker spaniel. And obviously, like I've always had dogs, like you know, as childs and what. I thought, yeah, I'll get that. Obviously, I completely forgot how hyperactive they are. And literally, you take them on a six-hour walk, and he's still ready to go. So before you need to buy a full week, because they just sit on the sofa. Well, that's it. And it, you send me photographs of like Clifford at the table, like chilled out and looking like the man. Mine's like running around the garden looking for a rabbit. Yeah. So your um, mine, mine, dog mine, walk. Mine, mine even takes my OCD into consideration and shits in the bush. <laughs> that's really considerate. Mine does it literally where I want to put my foot. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. I think I owe you uh, awards. Yeah, fucking hell, awards. Is there going to be any awards this year? What, what are we doing about awards? Oh, I don't know. I'm gutted because I honestly believe we have the best kitchen porter in the country. And why we didn't put in for that. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, say, yeah, I agree. Why the fuck didn't we do that? I don't understand that. Jordan is definitely, he should be walking around with one of those gold mugs for sure. Well, why didn't you? Because we were worrying about our business and coronavirus. <laughs> And we were we, just trying to be just we were just trying to distract we, people and do something a bit we, fun. <laughs> we could tell you stories about Jordan, which uh, there's no pitch importer that would uh, hold up against him. No, absolutely not. So uh, I, 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 we're going to put a late vote in. How do we do that? <laughs> well, well, you can't, but you can put him at the at the start of the list for next year. Right. You'll have to fix it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. That would be no. morally wrong. Well, <laughs> Most things that come out of my mouth are morally wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which is why I love having you on my lives and my podcast. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Go so, on. next question, which is kind of, might actually lead into what you just said about your award, Daniel, actually. Do either of you have an, ira a, sorry, an irrational fear? Uh, me, personally, I, 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 don't, I don't really have that many fears. I think I... I, I uh, if there's a problem, I try and sort it out. And if it, if it can't be sorted out, we, we just um, go through it, really. I think uh, I, if someone sets me a challenge, I, 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 I'm sort of um, like a dog with two dicks, really, and, and go for it. I, I, I don't really sit back and think... Uh, I don't think about things too much. That's the thing is I think I sort of live my life as in I get up and I do what I need to do. And... If anything, I'm the most erratic person you'll ever meet in the first place. So, uh, yeah, we can come in on a Tuesday morning thinking that we're going to do this, this and this. And by 11 o'clock, we could be cementing the driveway. It, it's just uh, none of it really makes any sense, but it sort of happens. And, and Mark's has to pick neither, up. Neither my lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's uh, you know, coming into work today has, because I've been away for it from a week, and literally been away from it. Coming back in today sort of makes you stand back and you think to yourself, you know, all this stuff that's got to be done. My fear is, when is this going to stop? Because uh, I've been closed for six months now and I feel like El Bully. Opening for six months, closing for six months, opening for six... And, it, and it's sort of like... Um, it kills the relationships between you and your team. It kills the creativity. It kills... That's the fear. Mark, any irrational fears? I would say... Locking doors. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I always like, I'm a, you know, I mean, I don't know how many times I've either driven back to work or walked back to work thinking I haven't locked the door. Um, yeah. That's, uh, or even at home as well. Just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, doors. It's weird. Doors have to be closed. That is quite important if you've got stuff in there that you don't want other people to make. <laughs> yeah, no, it just stresses me out. If I, if I don't do it like two or three times, I'm thinking to myself, I've done it. Okay. <laughs> and final question. If 2020 was a food or a dish, what would it be? Most creative dish titles, please. <laughs> 2020 reminds me of the day I got two Michelin stars. We went out on the piss and um, I was so ill that I puked three times on the bridge walking to work the next day. That's basically what 2020 has been to me. It's been a, a massive highlight and then a massive low. We, 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 were, we were smashing it. And I mean smashing it. We were having the best. When we reopened, we had the best three and a half months that Midsummer's ever had. And uh, we were, everything we'd spent the last six months planning 
and organizing we were on fire and it felt like everything was falling right into place and we had a lot of projects on we were filming uh, snack masters and everything fell into place and the worst feeling was is that we could feel it coming and i was saying this to mark on the phone last night that um the two, two weeks, weeks up to it was horrible it was horrible up to this net last one that we're in yeah now. this one we're in now yeah and the thing knew it was coming. Is, we knew it was coming, but the thing is, is since since it's happened, all the talk of it has gone quiet again. My social media now is all people promoting what they're doing for Christmas and what boxes they're selling and, and how they're trying to make money, which I completely understand, and we're doing the same. But <clears throat> the hardest thing to deal with so far is, is that you've got great individuals working for you that – Every time they're not working for you, you feel like you're, you're, there's a good chance you're going to lose people. And I, and I think this is trying to maintain a team during this hostile environment. is just it's just it's just incredibly hard, and it, it, it emotionally attacks you because I'm used to working 60, 70 hours, 90 hours a week, whatever it takes. And 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 to wake up at half nine, ten o'clock every morning, not knowing what the hell your day is going to be, is is soul destroying. And there's only so much maintenance you can do or, you know, this is not a fucking lockdown. Let's just make that really clear. This is a hospitality lockdown. There is vape shops selling eggs so they can fucking stay open. The, the watch shop in Cambridge is doing click and collect. So the staff are in. The, 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 you drive past the Polish supermarket, that's open. B&Q's open. Yeah, they, the only rest, the only businesses that aren't open at the present moment in time are hospitality businesses. So realistically, this is a hospitality lockdown. And I spoke to Simon Holston about it last night, and we both said this is madness, absolute madness. Because the end of the day is, kids are still going to schools, people are still going to supermarkets. What's changed? Restaurants are closed. That's all it is. And the end of the day yeah. is, they're going to give, they're going to open, open a window in uh, the third of December. And we've got three weeks to make some money to, to cover mm -hmm. ourselves, to keep our business open. And then we go into January and January is going to be a, a shit fight, isn't it? Because I can see it all happening again. So I don't know. I think the other day is, is a dish for uh, 2020. It should be a bowl of sick, really, shouldn't it? That's how I see it. Perfect. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I mean, that's what I was expecting. So <laughs> Mark, <laughs> anything to add? <laughs> Well, I was thinking like of, you know, and, you know, overcooked uh, my nan's cabbage, my grand's mm -hmm. cabbage. It was like, you know what I mean? Like you put your spoon in it and it just fell apart. Um, and, I think uh, that's a proper Irish dish as well, no? Yeah, yeah, but I it was like, it. it was Savoy cabbage in the pan, the cold water, bring it up, boil it for about an hour. And then what they used to do is drain it and put it in the freezer. What? Yeah, because they had, they had they they grew the cabbages, you see, and they didn't want to waste them. So they cook the fuck out of it for an hour and then freeze it. Yeah, and then like six months later, you would get a bit of cabbage in your plate, and you were thinking, I know where that's from. And this was when I was like ten, and I was thinking, this isn't right. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you've never suggested we put that on the menu. No, well, I don't think I'd be working here if it did. To be honest. <laughs> I think that's a quality example of what 2020 is. Yeah. Well done. Frozen, frozen fucked cabbage. <laughs> yeah, what more do you want? <laughs> we should have put that in the Christmas box. We want to sell some. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> On to the summer house. Let's talk about, yeah. talk about that. The last time um, when you uh, discussed Midsummer House, it was, I think it was summer, and it, you know, which seems like a very long time ago now. Um, and you both said that you looked um, at what you were doing at Midsummer House and you asked kind of what pissed you both off about it? Like what, 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 what pissed you off? What did you want to change? And have you, so now, now moving forward, is there still things that piss you off that you want to change or have you through that list and you're happy now i wouldn't say piss me off i think i think the the um, do you know what the 11 the 10 o'clock curfew has uh it's done two things one thing's it's given my staff more of a life two things 
The second thing is it's put so much pressure on the business to get people in earlier and to get them out uh, later. And COVID has, has, has taught us all a lesson, table side and um, what you can do and what you can't do. And what we changed was we got rid of the wine list. We, we, made, uh, we got rid of vegetarians and vegans. Uh, that's not because that's not because uh, I don't like cooking vegetarian food or vegan food. But what I tried to do is try to do we'd cook 12, 13 dishes, absolutely perfect. This is what we do, and we stick to it. That part of our business, I honestly believe that when we first did it, it took two months to grow the balls to do it, but it, it hasn't affected our business at all. I've had two people ring me up and complain about it down the phone. And uh, after a long, long conversation with myself and me going through the business and explaining the business plan and why we've done it, that has been successful for us. The wine list, um, it's made uh, the service a lot easier for the front of house staff. It's um, made the business more profitable, but more profitable in that we can give better wines to the customers. So our stock holding is not so high. Um, and the format of what we put in place of the, the way we wanted to greet the guest and the way that we wanted the service to be has all fallen really well into place. And the staff are a lot happier. So that has been a lot, that's been a massive bonus. Um, I've had to come out of the generation of the, what, that I was brought up in because social media and all of that aspect of the business didn't really exist 10 years ago. And and now we have to embrace it. So we, 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 we've now talking about media a lot more. We're talking about how we represent ourselves a lot better and what we want from Midsummer House. For me, the best bit I've done is I've stopped looking at TripAdvisor. Right. I've given up TripAdvisor and I'll be honest with you, I know Mark looks at it, but me, I stopped looking at it three months ago and uh, I've even deleted the app now because I just think to myself, if people have got something to say to me, they should ring me up or they should send me an email. Why would you put it on a public forum and slate something? If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. Don't come back. But the end of the day is, is, is you know, I had a, I had a long con conversation with uh, uh, someone who was threatening to get 70,000 vegetarians to attack me. And um, I offered 70, him 70,000? 70,000 yeah, 70, people. He was like going on because... I would because he had a table of five book, which I told him he wasn't allowed to have anyway. And uh, if it wasn't family members and he was telling me that this woman was a vegetarian and that she was uh, very upset and she was going to go on all these forums and completely rape Midsummer House. I just said to him, what am I doing wrong? What, 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 what as a business, I've made a decision for the benefit of my business and the benefit of my staff. And the end of the day is the consistency of the product that I want to serve. What, what, what have I done wrong? I don't understand it. I, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying I hate vegetarians because I don't. You know, I've got lots of friends that are vegetarians. But the, the situation is I've had to use this time to make my business more streamlined and to make it more practical and believe in ourselves. Because you know what? Restaurants have always been these places where people can walk in, do whatever they want, when they like, get what they want, do what they want. And the end of the day is... is you just feel the cracks happening within the business. And, I, and, and, and since we've reopened, I felt a lot more secure within the business. And I felt like we both, me and Mark, knew exactly where we were going. And we could, our costs were under control. Our buying was much better. Our, our morale within the team was much better. And I was a lot happier. And that, at the end of the day, is after cooking in the same place for 22 years, you need to be happy here. The situation is, I feel that um, the moves that we made were really positive. What do you think, Mark? Sorry, I've got an image of 70,000 vegetarians well, marching did, on Midsummer House. No. <laughs> you, after about 20 minutes of the phone call, he, he said to me, and I said to him, well, bring them all down. Phone on the call, that phone call went on a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he said to the bloke, he, get all 70 a lot of convincing. I said to him, get all 70 to come down on the common and I'll go through each one of them individually. I got really, really angry with him. But the, 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 the thing is, in the, in the end, he was begging me to do this. I personally think he was fucking his PA, he was bringing his PA for lunch, and she was a vegan. That's what I think. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope he's not watching. 
or listening. <laughs> or listening. Yeah, but the end of the day is, is, is we have to do what we do. We can't be... We can't, everything. No, we can't because the end of the day, being everything is, 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 is an impossible task because the, the, the thing is, this day and age, it's difficult to get good staff. It's difficult to run the business. And you know what? You just feel like you're back against the wall as enough as it is. And there's a point where you've got to stand up and believe in yourself. And it's taken me 22 years to grow a pair of bollocks. Mark? <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, um, when you were talking, when we spoke to you last time, you did say um, about making changes like vegetarian and vegan. Yeah. And, uh, there was other things like allergens and all of that. Yeah, yeah compromises that you feel like you had to make so mark from your point of view you did say that there was things that you felt that you did need to keep a little bit so have you managed to come to a compromise or has everything just gone <laughs> um yeah well we have um but the way we looked at it is is we looked at it from a point of view of what's the allergens that we can accommodate without actually bastardizing the dishes um because obviously the dairy side of things you know we physically felt we couldn't accommodate that because you know if we want if we felt a piece of protein for example a quail was best cooked in a manner involving butter then the last thing we wanted to do is change that because we were putting ourselves in a position we couldn't use butter um and you know we we We've uh, brought in uh, pescat. We serve pescatarians. We serve um, shellfish allergies, um, no nuts, um, and um, no alcohol as well. So, now it sounds a very small amount, and it is. But the reason we're doing it, we did it in that way, is is because we are able to hold a couple of literally two dishes, which accommodates that that we can slot into the menu. Um, which is as consistent as the other menu and to the standard of the, the rest of the menu, which we feel we're able to deliver every single time. Um, and it's funny because I do, I do think to myself with the, the 10 o'clock curfew coming in, because the pace in the service is very quick. Everyone needs to know what they're doing. If you have, you know, as every single brief and I turn around to the staff before the briefing and say, you, we don't have time to make mistakes. It has to be right the first time. We cannot repeat anything. The front of house can't come in and say, oh, there's been a, there's been a, a mistake on that check. There's been a mistake on that bill. There's, the kitchen, everything, everything that comes to the pass has to hit the pass the first time because the pace of the service has went up three notches. Um, and all the changes that we actually made um, during lockdown um, and which we came back to actually has really helped us to manage the 10 o'clock curfew because there is no um, because we save that 20 minutes at the start of the meal where the customers aren't ordering there's no cheese because, board imagine a cheese board at 10 o'clock yeah well we couldn't do it we no. couldn't do it and it's 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 slim lined it they're streamlined it sorry so we're, we're actually able to accommodate and keep the standard of what we want to serve even during the 10 o'clock curfew because uh, admittedly the first the first night it was what are we going to do here because you know we weren't happy and um, it felt like it was all over the place even though the customers really enjoyed it and but just personally it wasn't how we wanted it and you know as i said to the staff they, they've made it happen and um, because everyone's had to adapt massively and it was wasn't a case of putting things into place it was a case of we're in this situation we just need to get on with it and, and it just showed how adaptable all the staff was to you know to be able to deal with that uh, situation literally within a day or overnight yeah, and obviously uh, Danny said that he's happy now with what he's doing. Are you there as well? Is that for you? Are you happier now doing the changes and things that you've made? Are you now in a happier place yourself? Yeah, massively, massively, because admittedly our wastage now is next to nothing, is literally next to nothing. 
And then with that, you're able to give on to the customer extras as well as top end ingredients, uh, even even better ingredients than what we were serving. Yeah, but uh, you, you design a dish not to be fucked with now. So the end of the day is if you do if you do a pigeon dish, you, the the changes you haven't got to deconstruct that halfway through service and say how oh, we're going to change this because the end of the day is some dishes take six weeks to put together. I, I spend weeks on new dishes and yeah. we tweak and we tweak and we tweak and we tweak. And the thing is, as soon as you start letting a member of staff change that, if you say okay, we take a dairy out of that. Yeah, we'll take a dairy out of it. Yeah, but the thing is, is the next time you, you're letting them bastardize one dish, but then you're asking them for perfection on the next. So a table that hasn't got the allergens, you're, 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 you're sort of saying, okay, that, well, that one's got to go out this way. But the thing is, you're, it, it's just, do you know what? The product's changing all the time and that's not consistent and that makes me nuts. If you yeah. are, you, you know, you ask me what my insecurity is, my insecurity is, is uh, the, 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 there's no room for... Uh, freestylers at midsummer you've got you've got to do it the way that you know it's been designed and it's fitted in and 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 the thing is the menu now sort of writes itself it we we design a dish and that like we've got we've got a new foie gras dish coming on but that's been sitting there for four months because there's not a place on the menu at the moment for it because there's other ingredients that are in season at that point that should be used before that one so realistically it's, it's, uh, I've got a massive smile on my face. I'm happy. That's the most important. I'm happy. Mark's happy. The staff are happy. The customers are happy. The restaurant's busy. We make, we were making money, not much, but we're making some. And realistically, uh, I felt like we were flying and I felt like, um, I wasn't cooking for guidebooks anymore. I was starting to cook for the people that come and really love what we do. And, that felt positive. Yeah, I was going to say, so all positive changes. And you mentioned the guidebooks, and we did mention awards briefly. Um, I know the last time you did say that uh, you'd like to die a three-star chef. Is that still your ambition, or have things changed since this year has kind of erupted? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do believe that um, I think we're capable of it. I honestly believe that we're capable of it, or I wouldn't be still doing it. I... I, I uh, I've been to a lot of dodgy freestyles and I think we're better than them. And uh, that's, uh, that's the truth of the matter. Do, do I think we've got some work to do? Yeah, I do. I, I do believe that there's always work to do, but I, I think uh, I, I was the happiest uh, when, just before we closed with the food that we were doing. And I think we were the best we've ever been. And um, you have to believe in yourself and you have to have a goal and, and that is the goal. That's always been my goal. I, I never, I never stepped into this industry thinking about Michelin stars. When I, when I, when I opened Midsummer, I obviously I wanted one because I'd worked in so many restaurants with stars that it was a, a natural progression that I wanted my own. I wanted to prove to the world that I was good enough. When we got two, that was um, that was the biggest shock of my life, and I spent many years trying to protect that. And I think now I'm comfortable within my own skin. And I think the end of the day is the last year has proved that, that, that I've got an amazing individual that I work with on a daily basis, Mark. And I, and I think the end of the day, he makes a massive difference. He brings, he brings something that I couldn't bring to the party, which is, is uh, uh, he's much better with the staff than I am. He, uh, he runs the kitchen much better than I could because I'm, I, you know, I was a meerkat. My head was down. I was cooking, cooking, cooking. And I poked up, shouted, went back down to cooking. Now we've got, there's a marriage between the pair of us that works really, really well because uh, we both, nothing happens here without both of us knowing about it. And I think the end of the day is to have someone that's on the same wavelength and the same, the same uh, vision as you do we want three Michelin stars yeah of course we do we want we were the first restaurant in Cambridgeshire to ever get a star we were the first restaurant in East Anglia ever to get two do we want to be the first three star in this area of course we do but the only day is is I'm not going to hemorrhage money just to get three Michelin stars I, I want if, if that ever happened it would have to be a natural progression from Michelin to see what we've done you know I think they've had a tough year as well I think there's lots of restaurants in the UK that deserve three stars. And I think last year's, 
you know, Claire, Claire, I think deserves three stars. I think God, I think um, Claude deserves three stars. Sat, um, Simon. There's, there's a list of long people. I wouldn't be surprised if anyone gets it because the end of the day is the the, the 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 strength in this country for cooking is unbelievable. But also the individuality between restaurant and you know, you get letters in the post of oh, you know. Uh, Midsummer House, it wasn't really up to, we've been to the Hand and Flowers and we've been to the Manoir. Fucking three completely different restaurants. Don't even put us in the same category. You can't compare them. You can't, can't compare, compare them. them. And the end of the day is, they're all amazing at what they do. And that's the difference. And I think the end of the day is, is if we stay at two stars for the rest of my life, I'll be happy. If we got three stars, I'd run around the common naked. So yeah, I'd be the happiest man in the world. Chased by vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, chased by vegetarians, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously you mentioned what, like the relationship you've got with Mark and finding someone that is on the same page, that, it, you know, is focused on what you want. It's, it's not easy, is it? You know, you have to go through different work with different people. You've got to get that team together. And um, you obviously have a great team now that, that you are, like you said at the very beginning, that, you know, you want to look after them and it's it's hard when, they, you know, you've got to close the restaurant and they can't be there working and stuff. So, but what is it like when you think you've found someone in your team and then they let you down? Because I've never asked chefs that before. They always talk about the chefs that, or the people that they work with that are amazing, that are really like, you know, that, that, that are great to work with. But what's it like if someone lets you down in your team? Well, the um, thing is, I'm lucky, aren't I? I'm a father of five, so the end of the day is I'm used to dealing with uh, uh, different situations. So uh, I think I've matured a lot and I've grown up a lot. So I, I think now nothing surprises me anymore. And I think having the backup with Mark is, do you know what? Everyone's got a shelf life. Everyone, they give you 110%. And you need to remember the good things that they've done for you because the end of the day is, is we all make mistakes. We've all made stupid mistakes. I've done a few in my time. You know, we've got an amazing sous chef. He's been with us five years. He wants to go to Germany. He wants to travel the world and go and work in amazing restaurants. And, you know, as much as we want to keep him, we've also got to let him go because we've got to let him go because we were that age. He's 23 years old. He's been with us for five years. It is time for him to go because the end of the day is, is there isn't a place for him to move to now. You know, the end of the day is, is my position is quite secure. Mark's is 100% secure. Where can we move him? We can't move him. So the end of the day is I've got to let him fly. And there is nothing better than seeing, I've got some amazing boys that have worked at Midsummer House and they, they've all worked with Mark. They've all worked with me. And, you know, I've got a list of them and, 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 and they're amazing human beings and you have to, you have to let them fly. You have to let them become themselves because the end of the day is, this is very regimented. This is very, um, we do what we do. We're not going to start doing fucking tacos. We're not going to start doing this. We're not going to start doing that. We're not going to be Instagram friendly because the, the youth for today is all about pictures. It's all about how food looks, but they forget the key element is, the end of the day is, it's got to fucking taste amazing. That's what it's got to be. You've got to close your eyes, put it in your mouth. It's got to blow you away. Because the end of the day is, that's the experience that I live for. I would love to keep all the staff that I've had over the years and bring a team of people back together and have amazing... That'd be my, I'd get three stars next year. But the end of the day is, financially, it's not possible because they, 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 have to, they progress in their careers and you have to let them fly. Yeah. And Mark, obviously, you've not been in the industry as long as Daniel. Do you take it still a bit more personally if, to, if, if team members let you down? Um, it depends, really. It depends. Like, it's, it's more gutting more than anything. It's, you, fit, you know, it's, it's the old story of, you know, you think, you're, you think you're going this one direction and, you know, you think you've grown somebody into your role and then... It's the dreaded, Mark, have you got five minutes? And you, see, you look at them with these eyes, and they either turn around and say, oh, no, no, don't worry, it's nothing, it's, it's you know, nothing to worry about. Or they look at you and you just know, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is this, do you want to sit down? And then they pull a little envelope out of their pocket and you think, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Okay. 
How long you give me? Yeah, a month. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm up the wall. No problem. <laughs> um, is that the yeah, worst be... way they can let you down? Then is that they want to leave, or is there other things they think? Oh no, they can take on drugs. That. They can smash in someone else's wife. They can do fucking loads of things. <laughs> there's, there's loads of things they can do. You can come in. You can, they can get caught fucking in the restaurant. There's loads of things they can do. But yeah, there it is. You know, where, where, do you, where do you draw the line? The yeah, there is some things you say, oh, that's all right. I did that when I was a kid. But the yeah, there is, is, it is life, isn't it? The yeah, there is, we're dealing with human beings. Human beings, they have bad days. We all have bad days. Fucking hell. I'm lucky. If I have a shit day, I can go home. I'll say to Mark, fuck me, I'm not in the right place to be here today. And people will pay in ways they shouldn't pay. So I need to go home. The rest of the staff, they can't do that, can they? They can't just come in and say, all right, chef, I'm having a bad day. Well, yeah, well, you, you've got 40 for lunch and 40 for dinner to get through to, boss. But that, that's the difference. And the other day is, as a business, we've had to learn the tough way, because we've got more staff than we've ever had, is that... You've got to be more sympathetic. Do they let you down? No, they don't let you down. They work fucking hard. They, they're, they're, they're machines. They love what they do. When they stop loving what they do, that's when they've got to move on. And that's the way that I see it. At the end of the day, if they don't love working at Midsummer House, they shouldn't be here. Do you agree um, with that, Mark? Yeah, massively. It's, it's not something you can just... It's half-hearted, is it? It's like, no. you know, any top restaurant... It's all deep or nothing, isn't it? Well, that's it. It's 100%. Uh, you're going home. <laughs> no editing needed. <laughs> go um, hard or go home. Yes. <laughs> let's go back to... I've got a couple of questions left, but let's go back to uh, coronavirus. Is it the most intense, intense and kind of saddest time you've experienced within hospitality? Do you know what? I just miss eating out. That's, that's the thing that I miss the most. I see all my friends posting pictures of beautiful, beautiful dishes, and I just think to myself, I'd like, really like to go and eat, but I can't. And uh, I think that's the saddest thing. You know, I've wanted to go to Sats this year. I wanted to go to Claude's this year. I really wanted to go to the Raby Hunt this year. And I just feel like I've had a year of my life taken away. That's how I feel. And it's made us stronger. But, yeah, there's only so much fucking leaves I can pick up at 12 o'clock. <laughs> that's for sure. It's time. It's time. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the 10 o'clock curfew. I'm not against that. I think okay. Mark might be against it because he's the one that's got a stopwatch, a shotgun against his head. But, yeah, they, for me, the 10 o'clock curfew has given everyone a bit more of a life. But it's, um, it's nice to be in bed before 12. But, yeah, that is... is what have we learned from this? That's the thing that we need to all look at. What have we learned from this experience? Is yeah, there is is the littlest thing in the world can change us all, and it's a dangerous thing, isn't it? It's a scary thing to be a restaurateur at this present moment in time because we could open on the third, and a member of staff could come back with without any symptoms, and it could close your business for two weeks. And the thing is, there's no security against that. And that's the thing is, that's when the business starts. That's the, that's the fear. That is the fear. And I'll be totally honest with you, um, when you've got, you know, our, our wages at the moment are about £20,000 a week. So if we had to close for two weeks because, and we were meant to be open and we were having no furlough, to lose forty grand is um, is it's unattainable when, when, when yeah. you've been, when, when you know, that's like churning the thought of that, isn't it? The well, it is, it, and yeah, that is, 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 is that sort of like saying, okay, the last three months of profit have just gone straight out the window on two weeks of closure because because uh, your staff are infected, and the other day is, how do you stop that happening? You can't. And I yeah. think that thing is, at midsummer, every single year, you reinvest, you reinvest, you reinvest into it, you know. The money's not coming in. Uh, you know what can you do? Yeah, we don't take the money, Mark. We put it back into the business. That's what like, I mean. It's reinvested, and that's and the thing got, about we've got. You know, you've got so many plans and so many different things. You know, to push the restaurant forward, but in the heart of hearts, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. Well, if I went through the list of stuff that we bought in the last three months, it's like yeah, it's scary. 
it's absolutely, you know, and the thing is, is I don't say no. I, that's my problem. I don't say no. I say, no, we need that. No, we need that. Like, you know, there's not a, a Midsummer House for a 40 color restaurant. We, we've got, we've got seven. seven rational ovens. And I won't have any of them not working. I won't have any of them, you know, the, the engineer's here every damn week. I think he's on the payroll. But at the end of the day, is, is, is for me, I want my staff to have a place of, it's easy for them to work and it's a pleasure to work and the, the, the restaurant was designed this way and it's about following a process and following a system to make everyone's life easier and i think what i've learned from this year is there's a lot of things out of my control and i used to be a control freak and now i've learned that you know sometimes you've got to take a deep breath and just realize that it's okay to have a life i think i think that's probably the best thing that best but you know i've got a better relationship with my kids Got a better relationship with my staff. I'm happier with myself as a person. It's definitely a calmer Midsummer House is a much calmer restaurant than it ever used to be, and uh, I think the guests can feel that. What coronavirus has done for us is, is, um, it's put my plans on extending. It's put my plans on the little details of what I thought we needed to get three stars. It's, it's not that on the head for two years because I've got to make some money. But yeah, that is we're still here stand in fuck me i'm proud of what we've achieved it's uh <laughs> together we will come out of this stronger i know that for a fact I, I'm, I'm surrounded by good human beings mark's an amazing talent um yeah fuck it bring on 2021 because uh, can't be any worse than this year can no, it? <laughs> no, we, we've done we've got some amazing projects in the pipeline and uh i, I i'm excited no more new restaurants that's that's not going to happen, but we are going no, to thank do, you. We are going to do it. We got offered a restaurant two months ago in Cambridge. Yes, yeah, no chance. Got offered it. Um, I had a discussion with Mark about it. It looked really good. The deal was, you know, they were going to pay for the fit out. We were going to run it. And the minute I mentioned it to Mark, his fucking face went white. And he was like, no, chef, uh, that means that you'll be there. I'll be here. No, I don't want that because the product will change here. And, you know, they, they, that, that shows the strength of our relationship that he can stand there in front of me and say no. And no, and I knew no meant no. There was, there was no, there was no, oh yeah, like twisting his arm and maybe, it may be, Mark, this is a good idea. Because, yeah, there is, is it's, uh, we're better when we're here together, smashing it out and uh, watching it because, the end of the day is you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. And, and I think we've surrounded ourselves with amazing individuals. And it's, uh, next year is going to be a good year. It's got to be because otherwise we won't be here next year. So, yeah, positive. Yeah, well, it's good to know that... Today, if anyone wants some fucking plates, some beautiful big cocky plates, something more. Yeah, we're, we've got... <laughs> actually, we cleared it out. We've got like, like 60 of them, haven't we? Beautiful, yeah. It's a podcast, not eBay. Yeah, yeah I know, but fuck it, I'll try to put them on eBay. Don't you have to use up. your opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> right, final question for you both. And reflecting back on this year and, you know, away from actually specifically to Midsummer House, but you did mention it felt like it's a hospitality lockdown as opposed to a general lockdown. And so taking that into account, what are you most proud of, of the industry as a whole looking back on this year? Like, has... Has it surprised you or is it what you expected, like that kind of resilience, that ability to change and adapt? What do you think you're most proud of the hospitality industry? I'm not surprised, no, because we are renowned for being able to adapt and to overcome situations. Do you know what I mean? That is what we have always done, um, not to the same extent of what we've had to do this time around because – no one could ever prepare or imagine what's happened this year happened. But, you know, you see what people's doing to keep cash flow coming into the businesses, to keep their staff on, uh, to keep motivation high. Um, you know, we certainly weren't the only restaurant that was taking out time during lockdown one to reinvest, to rebuild, to rethink. Because, you know, it's been really exciting after that period of them first couple of weeks to see what everyone's been doing and what actually everyone's been using their time to do. Because um, the industry hasn't stayed still. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes, there's a lot of things that we've had to do to just survive, but at the same time, there's been a lot of forward thinking and people, you know, thinking of other ideas, how they can carry on. Um, so I think as an industry, it's been incredible how everyone's adapted and changed. And um, in one way, you know, once we're out of this, I think it will be, a, a you know, things will have changed and certain things will will have stuck as such. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think, fingers crossed, you know, there will be positives to come out of it. The end of the day is it is hospitality. What means what that actually means is that we look after each other, and I think that as an industry we have we've 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 you know I get a text every couple of days from friends asking me if I'm okay and how things are and and you know they, that's that's meaningful friends that you might not have seen for six months but they still care about you and I think the end of the day is so much has changed in my career when I started cooking. You know you signed contracts that you wouldn't let anyone else have the recipes where you worked and places like that. Now it's like an open forum of, of, of friendship. And I think um, that's what's important about this industry is basically we're all friends and we all look after each other and, and we work together and no one wants to see another business go bust. Our whole point of getting out of bed in the morning is to make people happy. And we're meant to do that twice a day in services that People sit down, eat beautiful food, have beautiful service, and and, and and are extremely happy in what they do. And the end of the day is, is that's the bit that I miss the most. I think uh, what have I learned from it? Whoever decided to start eating fucking bats was a nutter. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I'm going to wrap this podcast up. <laughs> No, it's seriously, honestly, it's, it's, it's been really nice to talk to you both. And I'm so glad that the stuff that you wanted to implement and change has had such a positive effect on, you know, what you're doing. And, uh, and it's great to hear that you're both really happy with what you're doing. Yeah. I'm glad that you've gone cold turkey on TripAdvisor, Daniel. I think that's, uh, I think that's exactly. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not what getting upset by it. It's just, you know what? It's not, it's it's, not. If it's something uh, dramatic, Mark will tell me about it. But what's the point in opening it up at half past 11 at night and not having a good night's sleep? Because oh, someone, exactly. someone's had a bad experience <laughs> when realistically they probably haven't even come to us. It's just awful, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, it, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been great to talk to you both. And uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you uh, when uh, there's no... Yeah, well, we we'll actually there. can meet up and have a drink. Yeah, yeah that'd be nice. Though. I come and do it in person. This is, the thing is, this is what we <laughs> should do as a hospitality business, is when this is all over, we should do a hospitality weekend like fucking Glastonbury, where everyone in the industry comes together to celebrate that we can be together. The simple reason is we have come through this together. And I'll be fucking champing in that. Piss up. We, you know, let's do the big weekend and go out, we'll book it up for the weekend after and have a fucking laugh because the end of the day is there's been a lot of sadness in this. Yeah, I think we, we all deserve it, don't we? We all need to... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, well, I'm going to let you both go. Right. Um, yeah. And it was lovely to talk to you both and nice I will speak to you, to you soon. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this interview and if you have any comments, feel free to tweet us or comment on the post. Uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download. And if you want to support us to continue creating great content with amazing people from the hospitality industry, please take a look at our contribution scheme on www.thestaffcanteen.com. This episode of Grilled is sponsored by Rationale, your leading provider in multifunctional hot food preparation equipment. Register now for a free Rationale Live demo at www.rationale-online.com.